Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today, let's take a look at the new live video feature in Keynote. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So there's a great new feature in Keynote. It's in the latest version. That's version 11.2 for Mac OS Big Sur or Monterey. This allows you to add a live video element right into your presentations. So your Mac's camera can actually show you or anything it's pointed at right on your slides. Let's take a look at how it works first and all the different options. And then let's look at how you may be able to use it in ways that you probably shouldn't be using it. So to add live video to your presentation first go to a slide where you want the live video to appear. So let's go to this slide here and let's say that I want it to show my camera here in the top left corner. I go to Media and then Live Video and it will add in an element right here. And You can see here it's going to show me using my webcam. The webcam I have attached to my Mac Pro. Chances are you've got an iMac or a MacBook Pro and it's going to show your built in iSight camera. You can shrink this down, move it to where you want and then let's take a look at the options. Under Format Live Video you can select the source and we'll get back to that in a minute. You could scale so you can zoom in on the video inside of the box. You could also set the dimensions or the masking shape of the box. So 16 by 9 you could do 4 by 3 cutting off the edges, 2 by 3 cutting off even more making it vertical. You can go with Square. You can go with a circle. Or you could go with Custom. Custom allows you to resize it to be any ratio, width, and height that you want. When you select this, double click it, you see you can also get the scale or zoom control right here below. So it works similar to how images work. Now you can also set a corner radius. So let's go back to 16 by 9 here and then I can set the corner radius. I can increase that and you can see it creates these rounded corners. You also have this green dot that you can move so you can create a nice rounded effect. Now in addition to all this stuff specific to live video you could also go to Styles and do all sorts of different things like add a frame to it. You could select the border just like with images and videos and things. Shadow. You can even do the reflection like that. So you have all of the options you've got with shapes, images, and videos with live video as well. You can also go to Arrange and set things like the exact position. You can even rotate this and it will work just fine in a rotated orientation. Heck, you could even flip like that if you want. Now, in addition to this, you can also select the source. So you can have multiple sources if you're using a Mac. If you click here, you'll see your camera, but you can click the plus button. Now, I've got two cameras hooked up the one you're seeing me on here, and then this one, which is kind of like a webcam. Let's go and Call this one my main camera and I can select from the list of devices. I'll select it and add. And now I've got two sources here and I could switch between them. So you can have this multi-cam feature. You could also do something else which is add a iPhone or iPad. Let's do iPhone and I've got my iPhone hooked up. You have to hook it up with a cable here. So I'll unlock it here and I'll select it as the device. And now I can add it and now it will show my iPhone here. So you could use this to demonstrate things on an iPhone or iPad. If you're doing a live presentation you want to show your iPhone or iPad you can do it this way. And you could see here I could actually you know, use my iPhone and you see it live there in the presentation. And then you could switch between these as much as you want. Now another thing that you should know is that if you want to have it appear on multiple frames like you just want to have it appear across your whole presentation or maybe just a selection of frames you can easily copy and paste. So I've got it here on slide 2. I'm going to copy and paste it on slide 3, slide 4. Now if I play the presentation and I advance to the second slide you'll see me there and I advance to the third slide it's seamless. Now it will react just like any image or video to any transitions and things you have set up. So those will work as well. So if you have your slide slide in you'll see this slide in as an element. 
So you can add it on some slides and not others. Add it on all your slides if you like any way you want to do it. So what is this good for? Well it's good in a variety of situations. One that comes to mind is if you're presenting in a large room. Something where the screen is much bigger than you are. And people in the back of the room aren't going to be able to see you very well. You could set this up so it shows you as part of the presentation. You could have some slides that are you full screen and other slides that show you in a corner or not at all. And that way people in the back of the room can easily see you. Maybe there's an important part of your presentation where you're telling a story and you want to be full screen so people can actually see your face as you're presenting and then other slides where you're not even there or you're really small because you want them to pay attention to what's on the slides. Of course if you're in a small room, just a meeting room, and you're actually larger than the screen then it really doesn't make sense to use it that way. Another situation where you may be tempted to use this is in an online presentation. But it's not ideal for that. For a streaming online presentation like over Zoom or some system like that it of course is constantly refreshing the video showing what you're currently putting on your screen like your presentation. If you put live video in there it's going to be a lot of extra data for it to process every frame. Your connection is going to have to be excellent and so is the connection on the other side and everywhere in between. Systems like that already have a way to show you in one window and your presentation in another window. And those are optimized for those types of things. So your camera is being streamed in one way whereas your screen sharing is streamed in another. You should continue to use those systems. So if you're using Zoom continue to use Zoom's way of presenting yourself in one window and your screen in another. But here is one way where it works really well and that's for recording. So I've got my live video here on all three of these frames. And if I were to go and record the slideshow. So then I'll start recording and it's not only going to pick up my voice like it would normally. That's the whole idea of a narrated recording. But it's going to record this video here. So each frame that has live video on it it's going to record that live video. And when I'm done I can stop and I can play back that recording. And it's not only going to pick up my voice like it would normally. That's the whole idea of a narrated recording. But it's going to record this video here. So this is a way for you to actually record yourself as part of the presentation. And now when you go to File, Export, and you export to Movie and you use your recording you'll get your recorded live video as part of this. That's the whole idea of a narrated recording. But it's going to record this video here. So you can kind of make videos just like my tutorials. Instead of showing your screen you'd be showing your presentation and then you'd see yourself in a corner or in some frames filling the entire screen. It could be a way to make a really cool dynamic presentation that you can then share online like on YouTube. So while this works really well now on Intel Macs running Mac OS Big Sur it looks like if you're running an M1 Mac you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. The final release of Mac OS Monterey should include full support for this. I found it works a little bit in the beta on Mac OS Monterey allowing you to see the live video but it wouldn't record properly. So if you're on an M1 Mac note that not all the features will work yet. So this is a really interesting new feature and I'm excited to see how people use this. I'm sure in addition to the ways I mentioned people are going to come up with whole new ideas and ways to use Keynote thanks to having this live video feature in it. For instance I can see people having a webcam not pointed at them but at something they're trying to show. Maybe a piece of paper or a small whiteboard that they write on and then they could show that on the screen or maybe something they're trying to demonstrate. Some sort of object that they're working with or building on a table as they do the presentation. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.